So Michael Mann's 1981 theatrical directorial debut, Thief, has just gotten the Criterion Collection Edition treatment in a new DVD Blu-ray combo pack, which I'm going to review for you along with the film, right here, right now. Frank is a no-nonsense ex-con safecracker with legitimate businesses to his name and a desire to leave the criminal world behind. He wants to marry Jesse and settle down into a normal family life, but he lacks the resources to reach a comfortable retirement. In order to achieve his dream, Frank must align himself with a crime boss named Leo who will help him gain the money he needs through high-profile scores. However, he discovers that escape from his criminal life is not as simple as he hoped when his new allegiance comes at unforeseen and unacceptable costs that may jeopardize everything that he desires. So this should come as no surprise to anyone who has followed Raven's Film Productions for a long time, especially the film projects I have done, to know that Michael Mann is my main filmmaking influence. His films have inspired me to no end. Everything he has done in this neo-noir crime thriller genre has saturated everything I have done as a filmmaker. And he is one of the most visionary directors in my view that this film, as his theatrical directorial debut, shows this guy is a spectacular talent right from the beginning. That he is so visionary, that he knows exactly what he wants, he knows how to get it, and he's going to do things that you haven't seen before. At this time in 1981, this pretty much kind of like set the standard for what you can expect from a lot of things throughout the rest of the decade. Especially when he got into Miami Vice, that influenced things on a much larger canvas that, and everything that became signature Michael Mann starts in Thief. The sleek visuals, the neo-noir styles, the slick rain-soaked streets, the synthesizer scores, all of it is right there. This is the genesis of that kind of thing and you can see that so much in the interviews on this disc, which I'll get into a lot later, but there's so much substance in those interviews that really kind of spark off, gives you the insight into how he came up with all this kind of stuff, where he came from in his mind and everything. And Thief is such an excellent work that every little thematic idea and all these things that you saw come to fruition in Miami Vice or in Heat or in Collateral, they start right here. They are here in such glorious fashion. Really getting down to the fact of Thief itself that you got this great character of Frank. This is a guy who has come to a point in his life, he's done time as a convict, and he, he's at the point in his life where a lot of recurring things in Michael Mann films is that time is luck, that get, get a lot of these characters to a certain point in their lives that it's just like, there's only so much time left that they have to take a hold of, to make the most of, and Frank is at that point where it's just like, I've lost this much time in my life, and these are the exact specific things I want to achieve with the time that I have, and he's very efficient about everything. He's got that little kind of slightly corny photo collage and everything that is just the, the external representation of what he wants to achieve. Very much like Jamie Foxx's character in Collateral. He's got that photo of the island on his flip visor and everything. Just a manifestation, a visualization of what they try want to achieve. And this is undeniably James Caan's movie through and through. He is simply excellent, intense but also touchingly dimensional that yes, you do have the tough, hardened criminal with a threatening presence and the charismatic bravado to back up everything he says. Every single word he says, every threat he gives out has immense weight and gravity to it. But it is when you strip that down, when they strip down the machismo, the hardened exterior and everything, and get to the heart and soul of the man inside is when James Conn's performance becomes absolutely exceptional. That you have this character of Frank who has been this convict for many years and had to adapt to the mindset of nothing means nothing in order to survive one day to the next inside prison. That you don't care about yourself, you don't care about anyone else, you don't care about if you live or die. He had to get to that point in his mind in order to survive that. But now that he's out, Everything has to mean something. Every little thing that he does is working towards the greater goal of just gaining those simple things that he, that each one of us really take for granted in our lives. That comfortable home life, a family, just a few little things that will make his life complete, make his life enjoyable, make it satisfying. But he doesn't have all that much time, so he has to 
take everything as efficiently as he does his jobs, as efficient of a thief as he is. He has to be just as efficient in every single step that he takes to make this comfortable little life that he wants so well. And there's that great scene in the diner, possibly James Conn's favorite scene of the whole film, possibly one of his favorite of his entire career, where he, where Frank is just sitting there at the diner talking with Jesse, bearing his soul to her, and telling her every little detail about everything. That Frank had a, a wife who didn't know what he did, and that marriage fell apart, and now he's trying to make this life that he wants with Jesse, and he's giving her every little little detail about who he is, what he does, and trying to have her accept him for what he is. And it is a fantastic, wonderful, heartwarming scene. It just, it is one of the best acting performances of James Conn's career. I'm sure there's no doubt about that, and he has always enjoyed that. If you listen to the commentary of the film, he really does praise that as one of his favorite scenes of the entire film. And then there's Tuesday Weld, who is Jesse in the film, and she does a wonderful performance opposite Khan. They have a great, wonderful chemistry in this film. There's a great warmth to her. But also, you get this real solid sense that, yeah, she is a woman who has seen a lot of things. She's been around the world. She has a worldly quality to her, but she's very grounded in a certain way that she's also tough. She's not just someone who's just going to fall over and be a pushover. She has a toughness. She has a strength to her, but also a tenderness that really works so beautifully in this film. There's such a great sense of heart in her character and love in her heart and everything. And the way Khan and Weld work together is absolutely beautiful. And there's a lot of other characters, a lot of great sort of debuts in this film. James Belushi has his film debut, Dennis Farina, William Peterson, James Belushi is part of Khan's crew in the film and he does a great job. Not He has a little bit of comedic chemistry, not comedy, but lighthearted, upbeat liveliness to him in the film that really works well. But the real fucking heavyweight aside from Khan in this film that is, uh, you almost go overlooked because Khan is so fantastic, so incredible in the film. Robert Prosky does a excellent fucking performance. He is one of the... He is a mob boss by the end of the film that could make you crap your fucking pants. He, to, in my view, he is one of the most intimidating mob bosses I've ever seen on film akin to something like Christopher Walken in True Romance or various other ones that don't come to mind at the moment. But in the whole film, he looks like a very fatherly type of figure that he's the type of guy that He's bringing Frank in, he's giving him everything they could possibly want, everything he wants, every wish they he wants is right at the tip of his fingers through Leo. And he feels like that great, warm, fatherly figure that he's going to take care of his people. But there's a certain point in the film where things turn, and he becomes the most intimidating motherfucker I have seen in very few films. He is, in just one scene... He sells an intimidation factor that few other can, and Michael Mann even says in one of the commentaries, he auditioned like 70 or 80 guys trying to find someone that just had the right thing to click into it. A lot of guys who are a little bit cliche or they just didn't hit it right, he got it. Robert Prosky got it. And it's weird, because you can even watch Robert Prosky in Last Action Hero, where he is just the kindliest old man you could possibly think, and then you see this performance in this one scene, it's like, man, dude, this guy is an incredible fucking actor, and he can do a wide... He can flip like you wouldn't believe. It, it, it is one of the best scenes in this whole movie, and there's a lot of incredible scenes in this movie, but that scene stands out because, my God, it is spectacular acting from Robert Prosky as Leo, just taking that hardcore villain turn in this film. Oh, that's fantastic. And one of the things I feel makes Michael Mann an exceptional filmmaker is his extreme attention to detail. He will have his actors train with the real-life counterparts of their roles. The actors betraying the cops will train with real-life cops. The actors betraying the criminals, such as James Caan, will train with the actual safe crackers and thieves that were consultants on the film so that James Caan can get that real-life tangible experience in his hands. So when you see him doing these actions, going through the process step-by-step, step, you will see the authenticity in it. And that will give him an extra piece of self-confidence and an extra piece of self-absorption into the role. And I feel that penetrates through the screen and enhances the overall experience, that you get the grit and visceral experience of the whole thing, that 
you see the heist go down step by step. You see every little detail that goes into making these things happen. And I feel that adds something to the overall sense of triumph and victory that Frank and his crew end up having in the instances in the film. And Michael Mann did kind of a smart thing in that he took the real Chicago cops such as Dennis Farina and cast them as the criminal henchmen and took the actual Chicago criminals and cast them as the Chicago cops. So you could get a very objective performance from these guys. Because if you put them in their regular real life roles, they might kind of gloss them over or kind of sensationalize them or kind of, kind of not be so authentic. If you got the opposite side and these people have seen the real life thing, they're not going to... They're not going to gloss it. They're not going to polish it up or not. They're going to show it warts and all. And that is a very smart maneuver on Michael Mann's part that I really, really, really like in this film. And the ending to Thief is something I feel is incredible. I absolutely love this ending because even though the actions of Frank might seem like the actions of an impulsive, heated young man, they entirely fit within his mentality of being the boss of his own body that... He will not allow the terms of his existence to be dictated by another person. If having everything he desires requires that to be, he would rather see it all turn to ashes. And Frank goes almost immediately back into that nothing means nothing mindset. And it triggers off the entire third act of the film in a great spectacular type of way. I love how Frank, even though he's built up, spent the whole film building up this perfect life for himself, it now comes to a point where he has to deconstruct and blow it all to pieces. And James Conn sells that superbly, immensely. Every single fiber of his being is committed to that. There is no question whatsoever in Frank's mind that this is what he has to do. That to him, there is only a yes or a no. There is no gray area. There is no compromise in his mind that either he's going to have it the way he wants it or he's not going to have it at all. It's a great sort of mentality that maybe not everyone would subscribe to, but it works so fantastically for this character in this story, and there's a great climax to this film that is done with a great sense of restraint and suspense, and just a great, great thing that Michael Mann, like, again, a lot of the interviews in this thing punctuate that, he knows when to use that great sensational score from Tangerine Dream to really pump it into the soundtrack and make it live and thrive and breathe but also when to observe complete dead silence the when to not use any of that to strip the whole film down to its bare essentials right down to its core and he does those moments so superbly that this again is one of the best directorial debuts for a theatrical film that I have ever seen so solid, so spot on, every single direction choice, every single cinematography choice, every little thing is excellently executed by Michael Mann. It's superb all the way through, and I cannot praise it more than I already have. But there is so much to say about this Criterion Edition release of the film, especially with the transfer of the film, the little bit of things to address with how the film looks now as opposed to how it's looked on previous home video versions. And there's this nice, handy, uh, very informative booklet they included with the thing that addresses the transfer itself that I'm going to read from as best as I can. Excuse me if I stutter here or whatnot. This new digital transfer was created in 4K resolution on a Northlight film scanner from a 35mm original camera negative. Director Michael Mann's original 35mm answer print was used as a color reference and Mann supervised and improved the entire transfer. The additional Willie Nixon fisherman scene was taken from a 35mm internegative made from a 35mm print. Thousands of instances of dirt, debris, scratches, splices, and warps were manually removed using MTAs, DRS, while Digital Vision's Phoenix was used for small dirt, grain, and noise management, jitter, and flicker. And there's also a brand new 5.1 soundtrack, which I'll address, but what an answer print is for those who didn't know like I did before I looked it up. Basically, an answer print is basically the director's final version of the film. After a color correction, after all the edits are done, the soundtrack is synced up. All that stuff. This is basically the version of the film that the director is satisfied with. This is the version that they originally approved. And the thing is that this edition of the film has a very significant teal color shift in it 
in many, many scenes. If you've seen Thief before, obviously it's had much more of a naturalistic color scheme to it before. Now there's much more of a teal look to the film, which takes a bit of getting used to. That it looks not quite how you remember seeing Thief. I don't know if this is how it looked in the theater, but the answer print is what supposedly is what all the film negatives are struck from for theatrical distribution and everything. So if this is originally how it was sealed, signed, sealed, and delivered back in 1981 saying, this is exactly the way I want this film to look. This is the proved way it was back in 1981. It's not a change of look here and now. I can accept that. I'm not going to debate that. That if this is the way that Michael Mann originally had it done and somehow it's been altered over the years, somehow, whatever, I'm not going to debate that. And I do think that the blacks might have been pushed just a little too far in certain instances. Uh, some faces a little too much shrouded in shadow where if you boosted things up a little bit, it might have been a little clearer. On the whole, there's a lot better clarity than there was on the old DVD. There's a lot of scenes that, like, this definitely does strike me as much clearer than it was before. And obviously the stuff I just read here that they cleaned up the print is so great. But there's still a great film grain look to the film. They didn't over... DNR the thing didn't do make things look wax or anything it looks very naturalistic It's very much a testament to the quality and tension to extreme detail that the Criterion Collection edition and everything puts forth in everything that they do and Moving on from that you got the 5.1 surround sound Remastered mix because the film was only done originally in 2.0 stereo the 5.1 mix Sounds spectacular that the Tangerine Dream score, which is excellent. I love it. Fantastic score Fills up the envelops you completely and even the dialogue sounds a lot clearer that things are there's a lot more separation of the tracks You can hear things a lot clearer in certain instances Certain things that I just picked up a little bit more like I don't remember I don't remember that di piece of dialogue before it comes to a lot clearer now I Just pick up on things a lot easier with a lot of the dialogue in the film Which is a great thing because it's wonderfully written every little piece of dialogue every little thing is wonderfully written by Michael Mann in this film and, the, and There's only a couple interviews on this thing But there's a 20 plus minute interview with Michael Mann where there's absolutely no fluff in this interview It is meat through and through there's no fat it is so substantive it tells you every it goes into really good detail about every little thing that how Michael Mann enveloped himself that. With me as a someone who writes these neo-noir crime thrillers inspired by Mann's work, Mann is, Michael Mann has actually been enveloped in these environments. In his movie, in his TV movie before this, The Jericho Mile, he was actually in Folsom Prison shooting the film, so he was enveloped in that environment of the prison community and everything he, he's been there he knows it he's felt it he's experienced it he's been to these things he grew up in the Chicago era where everything was mobbed up and there were crooked cops and everything he grew up in that so it was all part of his own fiber of his own being and he goes through so much stuff about that and just how the film came together how he came up with the look of the film how he approached the film there is so much meat in this 20 plus minute interview that it is just it was thoroughly satisfying for me and there's about a 10 minute interview with James Kahn who talks a good deal about how he's attracted to the project, how he met Michael Mann, how he prepared for the role, all this good stuff. It's really solid and there's one interview from one of the members, former members of Tangerine Dream which is all subtitled because he only speaks in German so you gotta pay attention very well but what he says in the whole interview is very substantive as well. He talks very much about uh, a little bit how the Tangerine Dream sound came to be and everything like that. There's just a lot, of, there's a lot of great substance. There's only a couple of interviews. There's not like a big long hour long documentary about the making of the film, but you get all the substance and just these three interviews is fantastic. And the audio commentary is the same one that was on the laser disc. It was on the DVD version. And the cut of the film on this release of Thief is essentially the theatrical version with that aforementioned Willie Dixon fisherman scene that happens right after the opening sequence of the film. A couple little things that were changed in the director's version that some people didn't like. Some things were kind of chopped up a little differently in the uh, after they do the big score about three quarters of the way through the film. A little beach sequence that's retained back to its original form. The sped up slow motion shots in the climax of the film that looked like very poor video effects. Those have been corrected back to the original slow motion versions. Everything is restored back to its original glory with that one additional scene, which I think is a really 
it's a really nice scene to have in there because there's one spectacular visual shot in that thing that I absolutely love. It has just a little extra something to the film, I think. And overall, this is a fantastic package. I definitely recommend this that anyone who loves Michael Mann's work has not seen Thief or loves Thief. This is what you have been waiting for because not only is the DVD anamorphic, great transfer, you got a Blu-ray, which I'm sure looks spectacular. Now, like I said, I'm not sure about the teal shift, that if it is, yeah, if it is what Michael Mann originally intended, and that's the way it really, originally was on his answer print, I have no problems with that. Uh, just going to take a little while for me to get used to it in certain sequences. Like I said, some of the blacks might have been pushed a little too far in certain places, but I can live with it. Overall, this is a solid package. Thank you, Criterion Edition, Criterion Collection, for giving fans of this film an overdue sense of respect that because it's been stuck on DVD with that poor laser disc non anamorphic transfer that has not looked good since the day it came out. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Criterion Collection, for giving this film the respect it deserves because it might not be an overlooked film, but it's long overdue for getting this kind of preferential treatment. So, as you can see, I have many other Michael Mann films in my DVD collection. And eventually I will get around to reviewing all of them. I'm not going to give you a time period for when I'm going to get them done. But when I get around to them, I'll get around to them. And I'll be doing them hopefully in sequential order. One of the first video reviews I did do was for the Miami Vice movie from 2006. You can jump back all the way back then, about a year. Watch that one, see what I thought about that. Because I was a big fan of the television series, which I have the complete season of. And might get around to shooting a top 10 favorite episodes of the series at some point, but tried doing that last night, waiting for this thing to show up in the mail, trying to kill some time, but it was taking too damn long, and I was going to be able to get that done before I got this done, because this was the priority, so. If you love Thief, if you love Michael Mann, love James Caan, post some comments below about what your favorite works from them are. I'm talked out, so post some comments, hit some like buttons, and I entirely endorse getting this that even though at some places you might be they might be throwing up a price tag about 40 bucks look around you'll probably get a better price if you look around certain places hopefully you will because this is a spectacular edition you got two discs blu-ray and DVD so whichever way you want to go you're gonna get it you're gonna get what you want and this is I only wish that they used that fantastic original poster art for this thing because it's a little un, unspectacular cover, but whatever the case, it's what's inside that matters, and what's inside couldn't be better, in my opinion. So, thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.